Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where OP single-handedly destroys his boss's business. Our next Reddit post is from Balls to Asher. I was a dispatcher for a plumbing slash HVAC slash basement waterproofing company, but I was more of a coordinator. I handled customer booking, scheduling, some parts ordering, dispatching, etc. As I used to say, I have more hats than a hat rack. Now, my techs had their own tools and I did my work on the computer. I kept bugging the boss for a better computer and he never got me one, so I built a system at my own expense and brought it into the office. My techs had personal tools, so this was my personal tool. As a matter of fact, 10 years later, it's the system I'm currently typing this out on. When I decided to quit, my boss, the owner, and I agreed on three weeks notice as an exit strategy. Unbeknownst to me, the owner was convinced that I was bluffing and that I was just hunting for a raise. So he refused to hire a replacement. Finally, the day before my last day, at 2 p.m., I was introduced to the guy who was supposed to replace me. Seriously? You intend to have me train a guy for a complicated, pivotal role in just a few hours? I was on a 44-hour schedule, 10 hours Monday to Thursday, and on Friday, I quit at 11. So, I said my goodbyes at 11 and started dismantling my computer. The first thing I did was reformat the hard drive, like I told them I was going to. Fortunately for them, the data was all backed up on the server, except for what had transpired that morning, despite my repeated warnings to trigger a backup from the server at 11 a.m. The owner came out in a bit of a panic when he saw me taking apart the computer, because he had forgotten that it was me who owned it, and now his dispatch station had no computer. He asked me if I could leave my computer behind, and I declined. So he set up my replacement computer, and to give you an idea of how old this thing was, it had an effing CRT monitor. It was slow as molasses. This job was already hard enough with my computer that had four screens. I can't imagine doing it with one. My replacement wasn't exactly a dummy, but there was no way that I could have trained him in a few hours. I taught him the bare bones of the processes, and that was it. By noon, I was out the door. My boss spent the remainder of the day and most of the next week in the field, leaving the owner to deal with the fallout, and it was legendary. Nobody could handle it. The replacement didn't even last one day. On Tuesday, he just didn't show up. Also, no one else in the office knew how to do what I was doing. He dumped some of my work into accounting, which pissed them off with the extra workload. He tried to handle scheduling and dispatching himself, which pissed off a lot of techs. He tried to stick another employee into training for the role, but she wasn't the brightest bulb in the chandelier. And the best part? I used to handle after hours on call, and since there was nobody with enough experience, the owner had to answer his phone at all hours of the night, seven days a week. That's when the exodus started. Over the next few weeks, many of the good technicians quit, and jobs got screwed up. I heard that he had two basement waterproofing jobs, each one of them worth five figures, and he was double booked. The company hit the wall, hard. How do I know? Because about three years ago, I reached out to my boss on LinkedIn, and he had moved on to another employer. He offered me a job, and I took it. We got along famously, and he told me all kinds of stories about how things hit the fan right after I left. And all they had to do was buy me a new computer and give me enough time to get the new guy into the groove. Man, OP, the owner is an idiot. He deserves to lose his business after that move. Basically, the entire company is running by one guy on one computer, and then suddenly the guy and the computer vanish and he expects everything to just work perfectly? What a doofus! Our next Reddit post is from Russian Anna. This isn't my story, it's my boyfriend's. When my boyfriend Jake was 19, he had a job at a smoothie shop. He worked with three other people and his boss, Michael. Jake's one stipulation before getting this job was that he not work with peanut butter since he's allergic. He'll break out in hives, and if he eats it, his throat will swell up. It's not bad enough to need an EpiPen, but it is bad enough to need Benadryl. At this job, they made protein balls, and the protein balls were made with peanut butter. One day during a rush, Jake was at the sink when Michael threw a big bowl of leftover peanut butter in the sink and told Jake to wash it. Jake argued and told him that he can't touch the peanut butter because he'd have a breakout. Michael argued with him and told him to just do it. So Jake, being the stubborn bastard he is, said, okay, fine. 
Roughly five minutes later, Jake's hands and arms were covered in hives. So once his arms had visible hives, he took a picture and sent it into the work group chat that the owners were in, saying, Can someone cover my shift? I'm a tad under the weather, with a picture of both of his hands. He walked out of the store before anyone responded. Someone came in to cover his shift, and the owners came in to yell at Michael. The next day, the girl who covered Jake's shift told him about Michael getting chewed out by the owners. The owners called Jake and apologized for what happened. Long story short, along with stealing money from the registers and being creepy with the high school girls, Michael was fired. Jake quit shortly after, just because. For people commenting that that was stupid and allergic reactions get worse, yes, he's well aware. He was a spiteful teen with no sense of self-preservation, just pettiness. The owners liked him and gave him an espresso machine when he left, so he says that it was worth it. But no, he wouldn't do it again. Down in the comments, we have this story from my awe account. This sounds like something I did as a spiteful teen. I was having a rather angry argument with someone about whether a plant was poison ivy or not. This person wanted me to do something while standing in the plant. I don't remember all the details now. For the record, I have severe reactions to poison ivy. I get weeping patches larger than my hand with my fingers spread. I can't recover without prescription medication. This person would not believe me that this plant was poison ivy. So in a fit of pettiness, I snatched a handful of leaves and rubbed them vigorously on my forearm. My only thought was, I'll show them. Not my smartest moment, but the silver lining, it wasn't poison ivy. I was wrong. Our next Reddit post is from Material Egg. I'm a master's student who works as a teaching assistant for a class of 60 students. It's a lab course, so there's a ton of setup and cleanup. I usually end up working an extra hour or two past the end of the lab, which I get paid for, but it does mean that I get home really late. So I started tidying up once most of the students were gone. There was another teacher's assistant there and the professor to answer questions. I did this for a few weeks until I missed one student's question. The professor yelled at me and embarrassed me in front of the student for not doing my job. By the way, the other teaching assistant was on his phone and the professor was just standing at the front doing nothing. He told me to absolutely not clean up until all the students were gone. We had this one student who always stayed over an hour later than everyone else. The next week, this student was the only one in the lab for over an hour past the end of the lab. The other teaching assistant was helping the student. I just stood there, not lifting a finger until the student left. I took my time tidying up. The other teaching assistant is useless and barely ever helped. By this time, two hours had passed and the lab was barely cleaned up. The professor started panicking, saying that he still had to write lectures, do his own experiments, and then have an hour drive home. He had to help me clean up. I did the same thing the next week, and the professor went into a full-on panic attack. He told me that I could clean up early next week. I told him that, unfortunately, these extra hours I put into cleaning for the last two weeks used up all of my available hours for the semester, so I wouldn't be in to help. I heard that the next week was an absolute train wreck, and the other teaching assistant complained that they were almost there until midnight. Our next Reddit post is from I Like the Quiet Zeppo. Many years ago, I was working one of my first jobs in a little cafe nearing the end of my training period. It was a quiet day, perfect to put the newbie on with only one experienced staff member. However, the experienced staff member called in sick. The boss had to come in and cover until my coworker, Sue, could come in early. My boss wanted to use the time on site to do paperwork out the back. My boss said, I'll be here if you have any questions. I very annoyingly had a lot of questions. How to avoid an incorrect transaction, where to find more special paper for the credit card machine, what to do when the coffee grinder stopped working, etc. Finally, my boss said, I'm busy. Don't bother me unless it's an emergency. Let me know when Sue is here. Shyly, I replied, that's what I came to tell you. Sue just arrived. Great. Any more questions? Ask her. Sue took over the coffee area and put me on restocking, clearing tables, emptying the bins, and other necessary grunt work. I went outside to empty the bins in the parking area, and I saw my boss's old car there with the headlights still on. I went back to my boss's office. 
Hey, boss. Is this an emergency? My boss snapped. Not to me, I replied. Then go away! I left quickly, and I went to tell Sue instead. Hey, Sue. But then I changed my mind. The boss doesn't want to be disturbed unless it's an emergency, so I'm supposed to ask you if I have any more questions. Sue and I worked pleasantly until the end of my shift a few hours later. As I gathered my things to leave, my boss ran by me, knocking into me a bit. Without turning around to see if I was okay, the boss said, Sorry, I'm in a rush. I slowed down to see what happened next, getting out my phone to text my mother that I was on my way home. I could hear my boss swearing. Hey, OP! Oh, shoot. My boss realized what I was going to tell them earlier. I was in trouble. Can you bring your car over and give me a jump start? My battery's dead. I said, I walked here. I live like a 10 minute walk up the hill. I raced off before my boss could blame me. The next time that I worked the same shift as Sue, I asked what happened to the boss. He left his headlights on, got a dead battery. The boss tried to jumpstart it with my car, but it didn't work, so he had to call a taxi. It's funny that neither one of us noticed the lights were on when we walked by it. And I realized, of course, that Sue had seen it when she walked in. I can only imagine why she didn't say anything either. OP, your boss is so dumb. One, for setting you up for that malicious compliance. And two, <laughs> when he says, is this an emergency? And you said, well, not to me. That should have been a clue in his mind. How did that not send off alarm bells? I guess probably because his head was so far up his own butt that he couldn't see the light of day. Our next Reddit post is from Land in the Sky. I recently resigned from a toxic workplace as a data analyst at a startup. It was promising at the start, but not long after, I noticed many red flags, including the fact that my manager had absolutely no data analysis or management experience prior to being promoted. How can you manage analysts without knowing basic Excel functions? I ignored those red flags and trusted her leadership because I liked the company's goals. But little did I know this would be the worst decision ever. I basically did all the work for the team for the whole year that I was there. Whenever I ran the numbers for reporting or analyzed the team's performance, she always asked me to dumb it down so that she could present it to high-level management. I thought everything was going well because I only got good feedback from her and the rest of the team. About a month ago, a coworker who I don't get along with made a complaint about me, which was absolutely untrue. My manager believed it without investigating, and all of a sudden, I was placed on a p on a pip. What is a pip? It is a performance improvement plan. She spouted all types of lies to HR, and when I refuted those claims with written evidence, they doubled down and started gaslighting me, saying, you're just too negative. I refused to sign and was threatened with termination, so I complied and started building a case against them. I knew that my manager was doing the pip to terminate me because she was looking for internal candidates to replace me in secret, but she was dumb enough to set the meeting up right beside me. Once I signed my contract for a new job, I basically stopped doing work and started working from home. Before my resignation, she asked me to do some reporting for her, so I ran the numbers and sent her the raw data. Then, I told her where the files were located and that she can analyze the data and make the presentation herself. Since she's the data analyst manager, she should know how to do it, right? She tried reporting me for that, but ultimately it backfired because they asked her if the work that I did was actually wrong. And she was forced to admit that she didn't even know what she was looking at. Everything else in their team was questioned, and I believe that they're now being audited by an external investigator. Her credibility has been destroyed. I'm now working for a manager who's competent and has clear goals for the team. But man, that was a hell of a ride. It's a small win against toxic management, but hey, a win is a win. Our next Reddit post is from Yingxuan. For background, I teach English as a second language. At the end of each semester, we're required to write class reports. Previously, we had to write our reports in English or Chinese so they could be read easily by management. For context, we're in China. Management decided that we shouldn't do this, and instead write them using the language that you would speak at home. Cue malicious compliance? 
Several of my colleagues are now writing reports in French, Russian, German, and Spanish. English is my first language, so I still write in English. However, to meet my boss's request, I'm now writing in British slang. <laughs> so, <laughs> so instead of writing class A is very good, I now write class A are the dog's bollocks. For bad classes, I no longer write class B is struggling with writing. I would write class B couldn't write their way out of a wet paper bag. My boss is now struggling, but refuses to admit defeat. She's instead spending a lot of time using translation software to understand what we're writing. Okay, um, a lot of times malicious compliance stories are just some douchebag gets all entitled and huffy and makes some stupid command that everyone follows. But in this story, there's no malice or mean people. It's just a really stupid command for no reason. Why on earth would they tell you to write in your home language? What were they expecting? That was our slash malicious compliance. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.